Big Mountain Riders and welcome to Life's a Gym. I gotta be honest with you, I have been slacking off, haven't done any efforts lately. Back in April, I did my Everest and I burnt out. Just as I was starting to get back to it, I crashed, so I completely lost motivation and now we're here. I really wanna feel strong, I wanna feel motivated and I wanna feel fit. So I talked to Joe and we decided to come up with this friendly competition to push ourselves to our limits and hopefully gain some fitness along the way. We have been riding a decent amount still compared to average, but we haven't done any hard effort. So while we do have some endurance, we've lost the power that we had and gained a bit of weight <laughs> along the way. So hopefully this friendly competition helps both of us. So here are the ground rules for this friendly competition. We'll be putting out a series of videos where both Joe and I will go for the same segments. And by the way, what should we call the series? Harden Up and Don't Give Up series or Spicy Legs We Don't Need Eggs series? Let us know in the comments down below, cast your vote, or if you have a better suggestion, let us know as well. So here's how the competition is gonna work. The first effort will set the baseline. And since both Joe and I are not the same speed, he's so sweet. We will be comparing our relative times and on each segment, whoever has a relatively better time compared to the average of the previous ones wins that segment. The winner each time gets to pick the next segment. We cannot go for the same segment for the course of the series. And if the KOM for that segment is less than three minutes, then we have to do two segments for that episode. So I think that's it. Those are the rules and the winner of this series will get a brand new top of the line bicycle. Actually, let me check that real quick. Oh, sh oh no, shoot. We just get bragging rights. I'm gonna go for my first effort. Wish me luck. Let's go. This segment is called Pomelo Drive Climb. It is 0.8 miles with 604 feet of climbing and the average grade is 14.2%. So it is quite steep and as you will see later in the video, the pavement is in really bad conditions. There are a lot of cracks on the road and a few gravel patches and rocks and potholes. So all these imperfections on the road start to get very hard to avoid. Um, later in the ride, especially <laughs> when it starts getting steeper and I start getting more and more tired, it becomes harder for me to avoid them because I start swerving all over the place. So uh, it's a bit of a struggle. Like right now, I'm gonna pass through a pothole on the left side and I avoided it pretty well. So that's not gonna be the case later in the video. Uh, the QOM, I think the person who has the QOM did it in 11 minutes and five seconds. Uh, and we did the math and Joe thinks that I'll be able to do it in 10 minutes. So we'll see how well he predicted that. Um, this climb is about 13 miles from where we live. So getting there gives us a bit of time to warm up the legs before actually starting to smash. <laughs> Uh, I feel like it is extremely important to warm up before going for an effort to just, you know, open up the legs and so that they don't feel so stale. Because every time I start riding, my legs feel so heavy, almost as if they were asleep. And it takes a few miles for them to get used to the pedal strokes. Sometimes, just as soon as I get out of the house and I start pedaling, I get this, like, slight discomfort on my knee. And uh, as I start pedaling and, you know, as a few miles go by it kind of settles in and it stops hurting or it stops it stops feeling uh, uncomfortable so that usually does the trick i know i have to probably um, understand what the root of the problem for my discomfort is but for now just pedaling it out works so <laughs> i know i have to do some stretches and some workouts outside of cycling but Ugh, it's it's hard. It's hard to do that, but very very important to warm up before you you go for an effort. Also, I always like to tell you how I prepare for for an effort, but honestly, it's been so long since I've done one that there was no really real specific preparation behind this. I kind of just needed to get out there and ride hard, and that's what I did. Um, but I guess I can tell you a few things that I do, whether I'm training or not, whether I'm going for an effort or not. 
and those things are eating a healthy diet going to sleep early and staying hydrated throughout the day I find that if I stay committed to doing these things I'm automatically in a better mood I feel energized and I'm ultimately better equipped for doing full gas efforts like today also I'm very unfamiliar with this climb prior to this effort I had never climbed Pomelo we did come down it once on our gravel bikes on a day that Joe and I were exploring Marshall Canyon and the Claremont Hills and I think actually Pomelo is part of the Claremont Hills. Um, so when, when Joe and I were at the bottom of Pomelo that day, Joe was super excited and he even told me, you know what, we have to come back and go full gas on this climb and I was like, oh no. <laughs> At that moment, I couldn't believe that, you know, I would have to come back after not doing any efforts and, you know, have to go full gas on this climb. Because that day, I was holding on to my brakes really hard because it's so steep and it's very rough. And it's just, it just seemed like a really hard climb to go for an effort. But here we are now and we're trying our best. We're trying to do the best that we can to complete this segment. I need that heat. That I won't forget. Come on, make me sweat. Jalapeno, jalapeno. I like it hot. So, my goal was to hold an average of 215 watts for the segment, and as you can see, I have been, I have been around that target, but very inconsistently, because it's very hard to keep a consistent power when the when the gradient is constantly changing. Uh, we are about halfway done with the climb here and I was feeling pretty good. I think my average power at this point was below my target but I wasn't too concerned because I knew I had the energy to pick it up on the second half. Uh, I think we definitely started a bit easier than I thought we would but again it's really hard to piece or to pace a climb when you've never done it before because it's you have like no expectations of, of what's to come. So I think my average was around 209, but my breathing was uh, my breathing was super relaxed, and I was I was even able to speak a little bit. I remember telling Joe my stats, like, oh, we're at, you know, my average is 209, and now it's dropping to 208 and 207. I I was getting a little bit nervous, but at the same time, I knew I felt good. And he even told me, you need to stop talking, just ride. <laughs> and I think that's when he knew, you know, she's feeling good, so maybe I should pick up the pace. Uh, and he did pick it up a little bit, like right after this, he picked it up, and I think I, I that's when I start, you know, standing and, and trying a little bit harder. I also start to look up because you can almost see the top from here. So I look for the top, I glance back at my time, and I see that I am well within my goal, and I think I start to get a little bit excited. Uh, but the grade also keeps going up and up, and I think it's never, I don't think it ever goes under 10% from here to the end. And I'm definitely using up all that saved up energy from the first half. I really start to move my, my upper body and I'm grinding my way up. And I think this is around where I start to lose control of my steering and my lines aren't as good anymore. And I remember all I keep thinking is please do not hit a pothole. <laughs> and yeah, I'm, I'm suffering now. So it happened so quickly from feeling good as soon as I cross that halfway point and Joe picked it up a little bit, that's when I start suffering. I start moving the, my upper body a lot. And you can tell by my power because it really goes up after that halfway point. I guess have a good ride today was that the weather was perfect it was around 63 degrees I've always said 63 degrees is a perfect weather to ride uh, or to climb 
not 62 not 64 63 is the golden temperature and that's what it was today we had a clear skies you could see the city from the top and it was right around or a little bit before sunset so we had a wonderful sunset once I made it to the top and you'll get to see that in a little bit so again I'm suffering but having nice weather definitely helps um, Joe's right in front of me and he keeps telling me go baby you can do this but I'm not too sure because I keep looking at the top and I'm not quite there yet my legs are hurting I'm grimacing all I can do is stay relaxed but it's very hard to do that when you know I see the top and I'm hurting and I just want to get there um, also as you can see my cadence has been quite low for the whole ride it's been around you know 50 sometimes it goes up to 60 but right around 50 or mid 50s and I do have a 34 chain ring uh, in a 34 cassette so despite having pretty easy gearing I am struggling I am grinding my way up and I know my cadence does go up a little bit once I get closer and closer to the top because I just want to get there. Here I'm getting out of the saddle again and it really is good to stand every once in a while when you're going for an effort. Um, but I feel like you do spend a lot more energy when you're um, out of the saddle. And, but it does help put out more watts. And I don't know if you've noticed this, but when you try to sit back down, it really burns your legs. So I'm struggling and I see a bench on the left side up ahead and I know that I'm almost there because the time I descended with Joe, I remember sitting on that bench and looking out at the city, you know, from the top. So I know we're at the top. I have a couple hundred feet left. So that's when I know I have to give it my all and I just start pedaling as fast as I can. With the finish that I had, I know I could have gone faster in the beginning because I had more energy than I should have had at the end. But I'm just happy that I'm done with the ride. And yeah. I am really happy to see this beautiful sunset at the very top. Oh, that might have been under 10. 9.58. Killed it. Uh, top of Pomelo, yeah. how was it? It was, the last part was really hard, but I feel like we could have gone a little bit faster in the beginning. Yeah. Maybe just a tiny bit faster. Yeah, you had a good little kick in you the last like 15, 20 seconds. <laughs> yeah, and this is the first effort I do in months. So we're gonna keep updating you. I'm gonna keep coming and trying to get better times and do other climbs around the area as well. But so, right around 10 minutes? Right around 10 minutes and we'll see. We'll have to check it when we get home. Ah! Look at that view though. My glasses so are nice. foggy from the sweat <laughs> and heat. Woo! How the legs? Gorditas. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cool, cool. Let's go. So here's the segment. This is Pomelo Drive Climb. Um, again, it's 0.8 miles, 14.2%, and we were able to hold 212 watts for the whole segment. I was hoping to do 215, but we were pretty close to that. As you can see, the cadence was quite low, uh, but we were still able to get the crown, which I'm super happy about. So this ride sets the baseline for the friendly competition i have going on with joe make sure you subscribe so you can see joe going for the same effort that video should be coming up soon and if you liked seeing me suffer make sure you give this video a thumbs up make sure you like comment share do all that good stuff and we'll see you all on the next video thank you so much for watching